Zero Accounting Software 2023. Write checks for expenses and prepaid assets. Get ready because it's time to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here, support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We are in our custom zero homepage going into the new company file we set up in a prior presentation that being get great guitars duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time right click in the tab up top to duplicate it and then we're going to right click on the tab again to duplicate it again back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down we want to open the balance sheet report tab into the right accounting drop down this time the profit and loss or income statement Back to the tab to the left so that we can hit the drop down on the range, changing the range change to a custom 2023 end of that year and update the report. Tab into the right, the income statement looks like it has the proper date range, so we're good to go. Going to go to the first tab to do our data input. We are now going to do like normal checks that we might see, say, on a monthly type of basis so these are going to be more routine transactions those types of transactions we might be able to customize and when we get to the bank feeds in a future course or section then these are types of things that we might be able to automate at least to some degree with the help and use of the bank feeds let's first take a look at a flow chart this is a quickbooks desktop flow chart but we're just looking at it to see the flows here so we can apply the flow in a normal accounting cycle in zero so we're looking at the vendor cycle which you might call the expenses cycle you might call the purchases cycle it's the cash outflow cycle because at the end of the cycle whether we're on a cash or accrual type of system we expect an outflow of money for goods and services we needed to purchase in order to help us generate revenue in the business and or possibly outflows related to the purchase of assets which are still going to help us to generate revenue in the future at some point in time so if we were on a cash based type of system, which oftentimes small businesses are, we would just use say a check form or a money out form. And this is where you might use the bank feeds most often for small businesses. So the money going out, usually we specialize on the revenue side in a particular type of thing. So the money coming in is all for a particular kind of thing. The money going out, however, has a bunch of different categories that we're paying for because we're paying for everything else to get done so that we can generate the revenue. And those are the kind of things that oftentimes we can automate uh, as we do so with the bank feed. So we can set up possibly uh, the bank feeds as they come through and then we can we can try to allocate the proper amount to uh, the expense accounts as they actually clear the bank. So more and more these days, most of the transactions that we make or a lot of them for many businesses are electronic type of transactions. And therefore that helps with the bank feeds because that gives a memo section on the bank feeds, which usually has enough information to tell who you paid for a vendor. And that also, now that you have the vendor name, can help you to determine the account that you should be uh, writing the expense to. Now, once you've entered a couple uh, checks a few over a few months, then uh, you could you could start to autom you could start to automate or repeat that because the checks that you will be writing in the future should mirror at least the same vendor and whatnot over time. So it becomes easier and easier as we do the data input in the accounting cycle because the accounting cycle should be somewhat repetitive now the other way we might deal with things is to enter a bill so in a bill situation we're, we're going to get the bill from the client remember the bill is a specific term for zero for the accounting software it doesn't just mean the physical bill because we can use a bill uh, in different ways in normal language. I could say I received a bill. I could say I billed the client. So it could be called a bill no matter which side of the transaction we are on. 
but within the Zero software, the bill specifically means we put it into the Zero accounting system as a bill which increases accounts payable. So a bill for Zero increases accounts payable, whereas a normal bill might be something that we received and we just pay it off with a check. We don't enter it as a bill. So a bill within the software means accounts payables going up. So that would be an accrual system. If we enter a bill, accounts payable goes up. We would do that if we want to track in more detail our accounts payable and try to pay them as late as possible. And that would be maximizing our cash management strategy. Now, remember, small businesses probably won't benefit as much if they have sufficient cash flow to pay the bill if they just pay the bills as they become due. That's why many small businesses will be in a cash based system using the bank feeds uh, to record their transactions. But as transactions get larger in dollar amount and more of them, then uh, there becomes a bigger difference between paying something today or 15 days from now, right? So, you, so that means that that you that as businesses get larger, they're going to need to track their accounts payable more and more because there's going to be a bigger benefit to doing so and trying to pay your bills, you know, as late as you can. All right, so we're going to talk about bills more in the second month. For the first month of operations, we're going to be entering our expenses as if there were checks. We're going to be looking our, at our expense accounts to make sure that we can format them properly as we first put in the checks. So in the second month of operation, it should be easier. And again, we'll talk about bank feeds more in a future course or section. All right, so back on over to zero then. Uh, when we enter the checks into the system, we could do so by going to the uh, accounting dropdown and we, I'm sorry, we could go into the plus button, I should say. And so here's our bill and then we would have a uh, spend money form. So we'd have a spend money form, which is kind of like our expense form. If I go into that, we select the account. Usually it's gonna be the checking account. And then we would go into the checking account. And then here is our familiar spend money form. Now note that if you're entering things directly uh, that are directly expenses, go into an account and you're not buying inventory items, sometimes it might be easier to go into the register. So the other way that you could do this, if you're trying to do this a little bit uh, faster, uh, is to use the register. You could go to the accounting dropdown, bank account, and then you could go into your checking account here and say, I want to manage and then look at my account transactions. And then within the account transactions, you can have a new transaction. And then this is going to be a spend money form. So notice this is just a, a little bit faster or truncated money form, spend money form, which is much the same. So that's the two ways to get in there. Let's take a look at the normal full size spend money form. So I'm going to go to the plus button and say spend money. Now, the, and we're going to say it's coming out of the checking account. So checking account. And we're going to say, okay, so this is going to go to now the first what I'm going to put in here is insurance, which is a little bit tricky. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a second. So I'm going to I'm going to add a vendor safe insurance i'm just making up an insurance name and uh we note that if you're adding this in a bank feed which we'll talk about later but if you were to add this in say a bank feed the bank feeds will often give you the the memo the bank feed data which sometimes includes something usually does of that you could use for the name but you got to make sure that you set up the vendor uh, so that you add the vendor in the bank feeds because that'll give you an added searchable field uh, other than other than simply the account. So I'm going to then say the date is on. Let's say the date is going to be bring that back on to Jan uh, 26. Let's say we'll say Jan 20. What did I say? 26. Okay. And then reference if I if I pay it by check, I'm going to try to put a, a check here. I'm going to say it's not going to be an item because we're not buying inventory items. So we just need the category. So I'm going to skip this and go on over to, I'm just going to put quantity one and the amount is going to be 12,000. And then in the account dropdown, I'm going to see if they have the accounts. Now I'm imagining that this is one of the first times that we're setting up our expenses. So we were given a chart of accounts 
by zero. So the general rule will be, I'm gonna see if zero gives me a chart of accounts, uh, an account that I think is suitable. And if they do, I will use it. If they give me an account that is close in name, but I don't like the name, then I'll go into the chart of accounts and change the name so that I don't have two accounts that are similar in name, which could lead me to posting to two accounts. And if they don't have an account at all, that is what I want, then I will add an account. Now, in this case, we're dealing with insurance. Insurance has a has an accrual component to it that you may or may not kind of have to deal with. So it's similar to the purchase of equipment. Note that when you purchase equipment, you basically have to put it on the books as an asset because the timing difference as to when you use the equipment or like a building, for example, even if you paid cash for it, uh, is so different than when you actually used the building to generate revenue that you're kind of forced to put it on the books as an asset and then allocate the cost with depreciation. Similar thing with other prepayments like insurance. Insurance is something that you are paying for before you get the coverage. So uh, theoretically then, you would want to put it on the books as an asset from an accrual standpoint and then allocate the expense with adjusting entries to the proper period that it was consumed in order to help to generate the revenue. Now, if you pay your insurance monthly, then you might not do that because, because you might say, well, it's close enough, so I'm just gonna pay it per month. But if you pay the insurance like yearly, then, then you might need to break it out or something like that. So we're gonna practice the prepayment item, uh, idea. So we're gonna put it into prepayment. So notice they gave me a prepayment account, but maybe I would like to rename it like insurance, prepaid insurance. So I might go in and adjust that to, to prepaid insurance if I wanna use that account. I'm gonna say it's for 12,000, so we're gonna pay for a year policy. I'll say for a year policy. So what's this gonna do? It's gonna decrease the checking account and the other side is gonna go into an asset, not an expense account. Once I have this set up, the next time I enter a check, it might help us to kind of auto populate the check. And if I was using bank feeds, then every time I pay this particular vendor and I have the memo, I might be able to set up like a rule that it can automate the transaction. All right, let's save it and check it out. So I'll save it. And so it's given me the check number that, that I want. Now, if we weren't using checks and we we're using some other form of payment, then we wouldn't have the check number here but I want that check number to tie into our mock bank feeds we'll talk about later. So I'm just gonna say save it then, and then I'm gonna go into the balance sheet and update the report. If we go into the checking account and check out the good old checking, the good old checking needs to be checked out and we're gonna go down and we're gonna say, and we're gonna see, there it is, 12,000 there. The other side's going to the prepayments. All right, let's go back to the balance sheet and see the other side that should be in the prepayments. So we put it in the balance sheet. So here it is, the, the 12,000 in uh, the prepayments on the balance sheet here. Nothing happened to the income statement. When will the income statement be impacted? When we do adjusting entries at the end of the month or year, allocating the amount of the prepayment that we actually used in order to help us generate the revenue. We'll talk about that in the adjusting entry course or section. So I'm gonna go back to the first tab now. Let's make an adjustment to that account name and I'm gonna call it prepaid insurance. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the drop down up top and go to our chart of accounts. And I'm gonna say, I like that, that zero gave me an account, but I would like to adjust the name a little bit. So here's our prepayments. I'm just gonna uh, go into that and call it prepay, let's call it prepaid, prepaid insurance. All right. Now, if I had multiple prepayments, I might use like a parent account of, of prepaid insurance and then, or, or prepaid expenses and then have prepaid insurance and whatnot uh, as sub accounts. But I'm going to use it. I'm just going to call it prepaid insurance. Take a look at the balance sheet. See if it updates properly. There it is. Prepaid insurance looks good. All right, let's do another one. I'm gonna to go to the first tab. Gonna to go to the plus button and let's say we got another spend money form. Spending money is going out of the checking account and we're gonna say that this is gonna go, now this I'm gonna imagine is going to Edison. Edison, so I'm gonna add the vendor as we go. It's gonna be a new contact for Edison. 
and I'm going to say this happened on uh, Jan 26 again, and then I'm going to make a check out of it, and I'm going to imagine Edison is who we pay for the electric bill. So I'm going to say electric... Now we might want to put like the bill range here. You might put like uh, what the payment range is that you're paying for or something in the description. More detail would be good generally. And then I'm going to put one and the price. I'm going to put the amount of uh, 620 and then the account. This is where we have to, we have some ability to kind of think about which accounts that we want to set up. So the general rule, I'm going to say, did zero give me an account? that I think is appropriate. And so a lot of times we'll put this under say utilities. So that's, uh, I'm gonna see if they have a utilities account and see what they gave us here. So I don't see one and I don't see anything for electric. Uh, electric. So then I, I would then say, okay, well uh, I'm gonna add then one uh, for utilities. Now note, that you might think uh, that the electric should be broken out. Like if you had a big electric bill for your company, you might not combine it with say the gas or possibly the phone. It used to be, for example, that the telephone, the gas and the uh, electric might be under one account of utilities. But then the telephone became a pretty expensive line item. So it kind of got broken out by itself. So then a lot of times people had telephone separate line item utilities including gas and electric or you might have a parent type of account of utilities and then try to put sub accounts that are going to be grouped under the utilities customizing your reports so that you can see it as uh, 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 an extended income statement with the detail or you can collapse it possibly into simply a utilities account so this is where you have most of a, a lot more choices oftentimes in terms of what expense accounts, how you want to format uh, your expense accounts in the reports. And you want to get that down first when you do the first month of data input, because going forward, your goal is to be consistent and use the same accounts that were used, you know, basically in, in the past. All right. So that said, I'm going to put that into here. And let's say that I want to put it in something with, with a six, maybe. So six, uh, let's say six, three, six three uh or six seven three zero i'm going to say the number is so i'm going to say add a new and then i'm going to say code is going to be six seven three zero i think would be okay suitable and this is going to be an expense and the name is going to be utilities utilities and save it all right and then I'm going to go, all right, let's save the utilities. And it puts the check number 1008. That's good. And so we'll say save it and check it out. So if I check it out, we're going to go back to the balance sheet, update the balance sheet and go into the checking account and check out that line item scrolling down. So we've got another check that's decreasing for edison back on up going back to the balance sheet income statement tab into the right updating the income statement and this time we did hit the income statement with our utilities account again you might put utilities here and then you can adjust the layout so that you can have multiple accounts under uh the utility account and we might get into that in a little bit more detail later you could have like a sub account type of setup so uh, so uh, that's a formatting issue that we might talk about in a bit. But first, let's do another one. I'm going to go back to the tab to the left, drop down, and go to another spend money form. This one I'm going to say out of the checking account. We're going to imagine that this is going to go to a telephone company. So we're going to say this goes to Verizon. Verizon. And I'm gonna make a new contact with that one. This one is gonna be Jan, uh, Jan 26 again. And then I'll make a check out of it. And then again, you might, I'm gonna imagine this is a telephone bill. So you might put, you know, the range of what you're paying for for the telephone bill if you want some descriptions on it and then the amount. So we'll say the amount is gonna be 410. And then once again, we can decide the account. So do I wanna put it under utilities? or have another account. So I'm gonna, I usually I would break out the phone to another account, 
So I'm going to scroll down and say, okay, do I have, I have my utilities. I don't see anything else here for the telephone. So maybe I'll make another account and call it 3740. Let's say 3740. I'm sorry, 37. Uh, <laughs> 6740, let's say. Should that work? 6740, I think it will. So let's add another one. And I'm going to say 6740. It's going to be an expense type of form expense and it's going to be telephone the telephone expense all right and then i'm going to save it boom there we have it let's record that let's save that one and then it's going to say check number 1009 that's what i want to see so then if i go back on over to the balance sheet update it checking account it should be in the checking but let's go on over to the income statement, update the income statement. Now we have our uh, telephone. Now, again, you might uh, you might try to make the telephone a sub account using our, our custom layouts of utilities. We might talk about that later. Th those are some of the options that you want to be able to think about. Uh, and many people get into, uh, they have, most people have a tendency to, to swing too far in one of two directions with these accounts. One type of person will often have way too many accounts and they'll like to, maybe the, even with the sub accounts, they, they tend to like to break every line item out so that they have all the detail. Now, if you do that, then you probably want to be able to collapse the accounts so that you can print a summarized income statement as well as a more detailed kind of income statement. The other tendency people have is to be on the other side of things. They group stuff together too much, right? So they only have like three expense accounts and they grouped everything into like three accounts when, when and that's not enough detail. So we, so you want to find that happy medium. And a lot of people kind of feel like there should be like something written in stone on which accounts should be used. There's best practices, but nothing's really written in stone here. If the telephone bill was quite small, it would make more sense to put it under utilities because you don't need the detail. But when it gets larger, you would break it out. And it kind of depends on the type of industry you're in as to whether it's going to be larger or smaller. So the general idea would be the gas bill and the electric are usually fairly small compared to other expenses. And possibly you would group them together then because you can. But uh, if you have a type of business where you use a whole lot of, of electricity, <laughs> then you probably want to break that line item out separately so that you can see it and analyze how much you, you, you electricity you're using. All right, let's do another one. Go into the first tab. I'm going to go into the plus button and we're going to say spend money again. Spending money like crazy here, but we're going to be, it's going to make us money. So it's cool. So this is going to be staples. That's going to be a supply shop, like an office depot that we're going to buy supplies from. I'm going to bring this back to uh, January. What did I say? 26 is what I'm posting these in. And um, you could put a description for what you purchased. Now, if you buy something from like an office supply store, like a Staples, Office Depot, Office Max or whatever, uh, it gets a little bit confusing because you could buy just general supplies, paper, ink, whatnot. And again, you might want to track some of that stuff if it becomes expensive uh, in terms of exactly what supplies you purchased, ink, paper, and whatnot, versus small supplies, which you're just going to put in, into supplies and not track them as much, most likely staples and whatnot. And then, uh, so, so, so that's going to be an issue. And then you might be purchasing sometimes large pieces of, e of equipment. You might buy a desk or something at these office supply stores. And then you would think you would have to put them on the books as an asset and depreciate them. So you can, so when we get in, so when we get into paints like a staples or something, you want to keep in mind the dollar amount and think, well, if it goes over a certain dollar amount, it's more likely I might have to put it on the books as an asset. If you're in the United States, at least for taxes, you might have to do it because you're supposed to then depreciate uh, the item uh, for taxes, even if you're on a cash based type system. Also, if you have a lot of ink or something like that for your supplies, or if you're medical supplies, you're buying from a medical supply place, then you might want to track your supplies in a similar fashion as you would your inventory. 
So you're basically, your supplies would be kind of like inventory. You might put them on the books as an asset and then, and then uh, reduce your, your inventory as you consume the supplies, just like you would in a normal inventory uh, tracking type of system uh, there as well. But we're just gonna expense the supplies here. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be 500 and then I'm just gonna put them into a supplies account. Once again, I'm gonna see if Zero gave me an account for supplies. And so I don't see an account for supplies. So I'm gonna add them. Note that I think that the fact that Zero doesn't give this extensive list of expenses is actually good because they give you the necessities and then you can build your own expenses list as you're, as you're constructing your accounts, which is more custom to you. And you don't have this massive chart of accounts then, which you're not using most of, right? If they give you like all the different options, which some other softwares do, namely QuickBooks Online does, they give you this massive chart of accounts and you only use like 10% of it, then you're always, you're always scrolling through this big list of accounts that you don't need unless you take the time to go in there and delete all the accounts that, that you're not using. Any case, so we're gonna go in here and say supplies. So let's put this under, uh, the, I'll just put it under the next line item, uh, 6750, all right. So I'm gonna say new, uh, 6750. It's gonna be an expense type of account and I'm just gonna call it supplies. Let's call it expense because sometimes you have an asset account, which would be called supplies as well and have the same name. So I'll call it supplies expense and let's go ahead and save that. Check number looks good. Save it. Balance sheet. The checking account should be updated. So that uh, good. Let's go to the income statement. That's where the new account will pop up. That's where the excitement's at right now. There it is. The so supplies. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the first tab and I'm going to adjust the check numbers here, which I'm uh, so that they match our our uh, our mock bank statements. So I'm going to go back to the first tab. And if you don't do this, that's okay. But the check numbers won't tie out when we get to the when we get to uh, the the bank reconciliations. All right, so let's go into the accounting and bank accounts. And then I'm going to go into the detail for the manage detail and look at the transactions here. So we got staples. I'm gonna adjust these numbers then because they got mixed up. Edison should be 1009. So I'll show you how to adjust these numbers. So I can go into Edison here and then I'm gonna say hit the drop down. I'm not gonna edit the transaction, but rather edit the, uh, the check number. And then I'm gonna say this is gonna be 1009. And it's already been used, but that's okay because I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that one, the other one too. Error uh, for the following reason already exists. Please enter a unique check number. All right, it won't let me do that, so I'm gonna put 10090, and then when I fix the other one, I'll come back in here and fix this one. <laughs> so I'll save that, and then then we're gonna go back in there again. Banking. I could have gone to the cookie trail up top. Drop down transactions and so we've got then the uh 1009 should be uh edison and then verizon should be 1010 and then staples should be 1008 so i'll fix staples now that i don't have that 1008 anymore drop down edit and i'm gonna make this 1008 and so that should be good because I don't have that one anymore and I'm going to go back on over and I know this is tedious but we're going to go back on over and then hit the transactions and check out so now we've got 1008 and uh okay then Verizon should be 1010 should which I should be good to change now so I'm going to go into that one and uh one this one was one zero one zero save that and back to the account again and then drop down and i think i only have one more here which is going to be this one which i can get rid of that added zero i put in there so i'm going to hit the, that one and edit that get rid of that added zero one oh oh nine okay 
So if you don't do that, not a big deal, but it, your check numbers won't exactly tie out when we get to the bank feeds, but you'll still be able to reconcile. But there it is, that's how you change those. So we did that totally on purpose to show you how you could change those uh, numbers. So now let's go ahead and open up our trial balance and see where we stand, because we're running long on time here. We don't have the time for this, man. We don't have the time. You're breaking your own rules. We gotta get out of here. All right, we're gonna, let's go to the reports drop down. Let's go to the reports drop down, and we're gonna say this is gonna be the trial balance and see where we stand at this point in time and hit the date range and this 2023 so this is where we stand so you can check this out uh the things that we changed checking account since the last time so if you tied out last time uh, and you're off this time you would think you would be off in the checking account we put something in the prepaid insurance we put something down here into utilities telephone and uh the supplies expense so if there's any balance that is off, then uh, you might change the range, extending the date range, and then see if that changes the numbers. If it does, drill down on the number that has changed and, and change the date.